Welcome to PWE Music. I'm Dr. Patrick Henry, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a clarinet masterclass on Etude 18 from the Rose 32 Studies. And this is Etude number one for the TMEA All State Auditions. And so, as is tradition, we'll be using the David Height edition. My cover's gone, that's how much I've used it. But let's dig in. So, Etude 18 is a little more of a technical etude, it's in 6 8 with a lot of 16th notes. And while the temptation is there to play as fast as possible, um, remember that the tempo is only 88 at the fastest. The marking we have in the etude itself is 76 to 88 for the dotted quarter note. So while that is fast, that's not as fast as humanly possible. And the reason that we want, I want to say that it's only 88 is that regardless of how fast you play it, you do want to make sure that every note is crystal clear, we can hear everything, and it doesn't feel rushed. So now, while you may be able to play the 16th notes faster than 88, we want to look immediately at measure 5, and then again at measure 13, where we have some 32nd notes. And it's important that these are just as clear as the 16th notes. We don't want it to be just a, a smush of notes together that isn't really clear and just kind of has a tendency to fall out of time as well. We want those 32nd notes to be just as clear as the 16th notes around. Beyond that, there are, some also, there are also some tricky things in here with the 16th notes, and as etudes normally do, there's usually something that's a little bit more demanding, just as a way to try and trip you up and as a good training measure. So we want to keep it in check. Remember, only 88 so that we have the best chance of succeeding in some of these more difficult passages. So coming from that, you want to make sure that the rests don't go too long. And especially when we have short rests in succession. So we'll go back to our example of measure five, where we have these eighth rests in between 32nd note figures. We want to avoid the tendency to break the embouchure and take a quick breath every time we have a rest. And especially when they're in quick succession, that's a recipe for disaster in getting out of time and slowing down. We want to stay on top of the beat, keep it flowing. Like I said, we want to be nice and clear, and we want to keep flowing with all of these repeated 16th note figures. So when you have rests, you want to make sure you're not taking too long on them, and if they're successive, we don't want to breathe for each one. Along with that, you want to focus on subdividing. So we're always keeping that subdivision going in our head. So we stay on top of the beat, we keep it moving, and we're coming in on the off beats in the right spot. This is also an etude that is ripe for playing around and seeing what kind of different note groupings you want. So we have many different parts in here where we can do groups of two, two, and two, and many parts we can do three and three, and then some that show you the way of any other division thereof. And in a lot of cases, picking the right note grouping will help you achieve a certain figure easier or with better clarity than just trying to go through and play it straight six. So a good example of this, measure 50. We have a two measures of just chromatic scale. So here's a good place to pick what works best for you. Is it better for you to go 2-2-2, two, 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 or is it better for you to go 3-3? Three, three? The answer is personal. Whatever works better for you and keeps it from going too fast and turning into a jumble and going and making it unclear, whatever works best for you to keep it clear, that's what you want to go with. An example where we might do 2-2-2 two, 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 and 2 is measure 40. We're alternating between first a C and a descending chromatic line, and then we have a separate line that descends in groups of two. Finally, as a final note to think about when you're practicing, and even when you're going and auditioning, don't be intimidated by other people trying to play it as fast as humanly possible. You want to stick to your game plan and play where you feel comfortable. And so when you're practicing and planning, you want to come up with your goal tempo. So in the beginning, you're saying only 88. Maybe that's your goal, or maybe you want to take it a little bit slower. Regardless of what your final tempo is, you want to remember, as clear as possible, you want to hear all the notes, you want to stay in time, and if that's not as fast as somebody else, don't be intimidated. 
It's your game plan, and you're going to have the greatest chance of success by following your plan and not trying to push yourself to where you're uncomfortable. Hopefully this video helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or send me a message. Um, if you want to support, check out the Patreon. I'm going to be rolling out some new stuff this week and in the coming weeks as school gets started. If it, if it helps you out, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.